Asian. Okay, okay. Welcome, audience, to D list. Okay, okay. List things while name begins with D. What the hell? Oh, right, right, right. I gotta do this first. Play opening theme. <laughs> Ah, King's Quest. Sierra's groundbreaking adventure game franchise that rewards helping those in trouble and picking up literally every item you encounter, building a generation of altruistic kleptomaniacs. It's also the franchise that simultaneously rewards and punishes exploration. Because on the one hand, you can't accomplish anything in any game without looking around and trying things out. But on the other hand, DEATH WAITS AROUND EVERY CORNER! EVERY NOOK AND CRANNY OF THE KINGDOM IS FILLED WITH THINGS THAT WANT TO MURDER YOU! So you play it safe. Stick to the well-lit areas, but then you go around in circles, not progressing in the game. So you dip your toes somewhere unsafe, and BAM! You're dead forever! Hope you saved your game, but I hope you saved it before you lost that one-of-a-kind inventory item because it's impossible to win without it. I love these games, but man, can they ever be stressful. So today I'm going to count down the most frustrating deaths in the King's Quest series. For the sake of simplicity, I'm only going to look at the original games, not the fan games or the recent episodic edition. And I'm only going to look at games 1 through 6, because although King's Quest 7 had some annoying deaths, the frustration was tempered by the fact that you could pick up right where you left off with no consequence. And the deaths in King's Quest 8 were mostly of the, oh no, I'm out of health variety, and the only frustration there is why a King's Quest game has a health bar. Tickets. Oh. Next. Number 9. Here's an annoying cause of death shared by all the classic King's Quest games, gravity. You have to do a surprising amount of climbing when you're royalty, and when you're navigating with the arrow keys, it's far too easy to lose your footing. Now, not every fall will kill you, some will just shake you up for a bit, but sometimes there's only a hair difference between a slapstick fall and a deadly fall, and the distinction seems to be arbitrarily placed. Even falls in the home can be deadly! Those Life Alert commercials were right! You can fall on your own stairs! Especially if that evil cat is trying to murder you. Ah. Oh, I see you, Phantom. Laying in wait trying to kill me. I'm on to you. Once they got to the later games, the smarter cursor system meant there were fewer places to fall to your death, but they still popped up here and there. And it was especially frustrating in King's Quest V because of Graham's ear-piercing scream. <laughs> Jeez, Graham, I know you're dying, but that's no reason to give the rest of us tinnitus. Tickets. Oh. Next. Number 8. This one is mostly just annoying and pointless. You're playing King's Quest 1, the original animated graphic adventure. A true piece of history. You start out at the castle, and then you decide to explore to the west. Hey, look, there's a rock here. Let's see what's under it. Push. Rock. Now, if you're standing north of the rock, it will reveal a hole with a dagger. Congratulations to you. But if you're standing south of the rock... What the hell? You push the rock and then it slides in the direction you push it from? Well, that's not how physics work at all. Apparently the idea here is supposed to be that you loosen the rock and it rolls downhill over you, and fair enough, that was difficult to convey with the graphics at the time. They made it slightly clearer in the remake. But either way, the death is at best pointless. You don't learn any strategy or puzzle solution from it. All you learn is, hey, anything around here might kill you. Actually, that is an important lesson to learn early on in this game. Tickets. Oh. Next. Number seven. Before you get very far in King's Quest V, you have to navigate a seemingly endless desert without any sort of map or any sort of in-game hints. Hope you like trial and error. Okay, wandering from oasis to oasis is tedious, but not insurmountable. No, the annoying part's the screens of instant death by way of Speedy the Scorpion over here. Too bad. Even the sting of such a small creature can prove deadly. And here's what annoys me about this death. It's only there to make the vast emptiness smaller. The scorpion screens block access so you don't navigate around the river to the south of Serenia. And that's fair, I get that they have to keep this finite, but... Do they have to kill us to do it? Couldn't the same effect be achieved with 
a branch? Or the river itself? Do you have to go straight to murder? Apparently they did, because they pulled this same dirty trick again later in the game with a sea serpent. Why just stop us from going somewhere when you can kill us for not knowing we weren't supposed to go there like the idiots we are? Watch your step, death lies around every single corner for no reason. Did I play this game because I was a shut-in, or was I a shut-in because I played this game? Tickets. Oh. Next. Number six. This next entry isn't frustrating because the game's being particularly unfair. This one leaves me frustrated at myself. In King's Quest III, you play as the slave of the evil wizard Mananin, and you have to covertly learn magic to escape him. But if he catches you learning magic, he's gonna kill you. So you have to wait until he goes out of town, and then gather all the magical inventory and start casting the spells and making some magic happen. And then you have to hide the stuff before he gets back, but you're really getting into a groove making these spells. And just when you're almost ready... Oh, look who's home. Thing is, you can't say you didn't get plenty of warning. There's a big timer up there, and his journeys always last the same amount of time. You should have been keeping track of when he'd be back. This one's entirely on you. So you can't blame Sierra for this one, but you can be filled with good old-fashioned self-loathing. And isn't that what playing decades-old fantasy games is all about? Tickets. Oh. Next. Number five. King's Quest VI is widely considered to be the best installment of the series, but really people only say that because King's Quest VI is the best game ever made. But if we're limiting our discussion to the context of the series, one of the reasons it's the best is that it strikes up the best balance of perfecting everything that made the series great while minimizing the things that made it frustrating. But it's not devoid of frustrations, and for me, most of those frustrations come from... The Labyrinth. Yes, The Labyrinth. Sure, the trapdoors are annoying, but easily avoidable once you know where they are. No, the real frustrating deaths come from puzzles that you need a specific inventory item to solve, and you don't have that item. And if you don't know what item you're supposed to have, you might not even know that you don't have the right item. And to the game's credit, it tries to give you a chance to avoid this. If you don't have all the items you need for the labyrinth when you're first sent, they let you leave to prepare and come back later. But with no indication of what you need, you still might come back shorthanded and not realize it until you're already six saved games deep. Intruder. Good. Just in time for dinner. Let's not be hasty now. Oof! Ah, wandering through a seemingly endless catacomb with no hope for escape. It's like the Indiana Jones adventure queue during spring break. Except then you can at least sing with your friends. So you think you can stone me and spit in my eyes? <laughs> so you think you can love me and leave me to die? Tickets. Oh. Next. Number four. In King's Quest IV, you're seeking a magical fruit to save the life of both Graham and the Good Fairy. And to find this fruit, you have to pass through a dark cave. And you fumble your way around in this cave, seeking the exit on the other side, and then... They have a cave troll. Ugh, it's hard enough to navigate in the dark, now there's a monster. Okay, fine, I'll double back to the previous screen, and what the hell? The monster followed me? That's not what King's Quest monsters do! King's Quest monsters disappear the moment you step off screen! This one follows you from screen to screen like it's a real monster! I mean, I know that's more realistic than suddenly being safe because you stepped two inches to the right, but... A newsflash! The genre's called fantasy! It's meant to be unrealistic, you myopic vanity! Huh, this has been a surprisingly Tolkien-heavy entry. Tickets. Oh. Next. Number three. In King's Quest II, Graham is on the quest to rescue a girl in the tower, which later turns out to be a hereditary predilection. But here that tower is in another realm that can only be reached through a magic door. And that magic door is locked behind two other magic doors near a cliffside on the other side of a rickety bridge. And you must seek out the key for each door, return to reveal the next door, and then seek out the next key until... <laughs> Turns out the bridge is rickety in a very precise way. 
you can only cross it the exact number of times you need in order to complete each key mission. So if you wandered over here aimlessly and didn't get the next clue, you're stuck out of luck. Each crossing of the bridge has to count, and you're supposed to figure this out because each time you cross the bridge you get one more point. You mean the points bar had a f***ing purpose? Is that why Universal took the collapsing bridge part off the studio tour? They realized they only had one more point left to go? Tickets up. Next. Number two. Back in the days before DRM, software companies had to find other ways to combat piracy by making it annoying to deal with things you legally purchased. And in the King's Quest series, this took the form of puzzles that could only be solved with hints from the manual. And those magic spells in King's Quest 3 were the most tedious of all. You had to type in each direction of each spell exactly as it's written in the manual. In the exact right order. And God forbid you make a typo, because if you screw up even one letter of one of these spells, you're dead. At least each spell had its own individual death, and they're all kind of amusing. These games really do love to laugh at you when you die. King's Quest, a series of hope for the kingdom and mockery for the clumsy. Tickets. And the oh. number one most frustrating Next. King's Quest death. Hey, guess what? We're back to King's Quest V. In King's Quest V, you find yourself outside the Swarthy Hog Inn, and because you're supposed to explore every nook and cranny, you give it a try. Ooh, I'll wait for you out here. I don't like that place. Cedric, you don't want to go anywhere, you useless flying Elmo Gungan. But in this case, his fears were justified because despite the cheerful music, the inn is run by bad guys. And they lock you up for having the nerve to step into their seemingly legitimate business while they're talking crime stuff. Okay, so you're dead. Well, this is why you save your game before doing absolutely anything, right? You learned your lesson, you know, not to go back in there again. Not that frustrating, right? No, the death itself isn't the frustrating part. The frustrating part is you do need to go back in there again. And you have no way of knowing that. Oh, but okay, but once I find the tool that obviously helps me escape, I'll make the connection, right? Oh no. Do you know what you need to do in order to escape? Before you go in there, you need to throw a boot at a cat so that later the rat will set you free. I told you I'd repay your kindness when you saved me from that horrible cat! How the hell are we supposed to figure that out? How are we supposed to deduce the cause and effect going on there? The only way to figure it out without a strategy guide is if you accidentally do it in the right order the first time. And the only purpose of the detour is to get a rope and some meat. This is kind of a microcosm of the general frustrations of King's Quest V, which is the most relentless and rigid game in the entire franchise. Well, at least you get to watch Cedric get injured a lot. Pity you have to save him each time. Well, those are the elements that just drive me absolutely insane about this game series that I genuinely love despite it all. They may not be the most relaxing games, but it's still a lot of fun to explore Daventry. So what are some of your favorite games that still have really, really annoying elements that kind of drive you crazy but don't ruin the rest of your experience? Let's discuss this in the comments, and until next time, this is Dave, signing off.